Hi, um, my name is Shelly, and I made this video to explain why I advocate for the Zeitgeist Movement. Um, I am an artist, a philosopher, and an athlete, but most importantly I'm a human being, and I do really care about this planet, and I do care about people, and how we treat each other. And um, there's so many reason that I, reasons that I do support the movement that I ended up just writing the essay, and I'm just going to read that to you guys, and I hope um, I apologize that my eyes are going to be dying back and forth, but I hope it can connect to people, and it's the best way I can figure to organize my thoughts so I'm not just rambling. <laughs> okay, so why I advocate the Venus Project and the Zeitgeist Movement. If you have never heard of the Venus Project or the Zeitgeist Movement, I strongly encourage you to check them out. Educate yourself in order to truly understand this direction. Visit www thevenusproject.com and www.zeitgeistmovement.com for more information. Simultaneously, the Zeitgeist Movement, which is the activist arm of the Venus Project, is an intellectual movement, an ethical movement, a scientific movement, a philosophical movement, a social movement, an environmental movement, an education movement, and a civil rights movement. It calls for a complete redesign of our societal structures as we know them. We would essentially be entering a brand new paradigm. We believe that the world needs to change dramatically if we want a bright future for humanity. Real change. I believe in the power of ideas. They can change the world. I know they've changed me countless times. All the time I'm changing, evolving, learning new things, we need to do this as a society, as a collective. Many, if not most people, acknowledge that the world faces many problems. We see them every day. We know that there are people suffering all over the world from poverty, starvation, natural disaster, war, disease, violence, and discrimination. We realize that there's a large gap between the rich and the poor I'm sorry, <laughs> the rich of the world and the poor. We know that we are dependent on oil and are polluting the environment. Needless to say, there are plenty of problems, but the important question is, how do we solve them? Most simply do not know. Some believe that our politicians are our best bet. However, many of us are beginning to accept that our governments are not solving these problems. President Obama, for example, is very skilled at telling us what we want to hear. He may want to change the world all he wants, but at the end of the day, does he have a clue of how to solve the problems we face? Clearly not. What has really changed through the work of our political leaders? Are there any less problems than before? It is time for us to realize that our traditional ways of addressing problems is not effective. We need to understand that the only way to truly solve problems is by using the scientific method. Basically what the Venus Project is, is using the scientific method for social concern. This may seem extremely obvious and logical. That's because it is. But please note, this is not how we operate our society today. Ask yourself this. What qualifications do our political leaders have for their positions? While many may have backgrounds in economics and law, they are merely elected. Basically, what it seems to come down to is who is the most eloquent speaker and who has the most money to fund their political campaign. How does this qualify them to solve the problems we mentioned? Does our system honestly make any sense in today's complex world? I personally found that the more I thought about how we organize and operate society, the more and more I realized how illogical its methods are. If the scientific method does not operate our society, what system does? The monetary system the system of money. Think about how almost everything you do involves money somehow. 
the food you eat, the water you drink, your possessions, and your entertainment, your transportation. It somehow seems to infiltrate every corner of our social lives, yet we take it completely for granted. This system seems completely, na completely natural because, for one, we have been using some form of it for thousands of years. If you were to ask a goldfish, what is the most obvious thing in your life? The last thing it would say is water. We totally take the system of money for granted. There's no doubt about that. But I, for one, can never remember a time when I agreed to use our system of money. Yet I do so every time I use it. Money is as real to us as food. People die if they don't have it. Every day. Yet, wait a minute. It's not real, is it? Money isn't natural, it's an idea, a symbol. Don't let it confuse you. Money really is a counterfeit resource. It's only pretending to be a resource. The primary assumption that money makes is that natural resources are scarce. Therefore, it is scarce too. There's never enough of it to go around. How does this make any sense? And how can we provide the whole world with even basic human necessities? We certainly can't afford it. But here again, we've managed to confuse ourselves. We need to think differently, outside of the cash box, so to speak. The truth of the matter is that we do live on a finite planet with only so many resources. However, that doesn't mean that, it's, that it is adequately described and represented through dollar signs. It is imperative, if we are to move forward into a new paradigm, that we understand that the system of money is outdated. It no longer helps us to account for our resources or their true value. In fact, it's hurting us in many ways because we are deluded to think that it is m the most important thing, the bottom line. Money is not the end-all, be-all. It is just a tool of measuring the value of resources. And thankfully today, we have up updated technology. Instead of a monetary-based economy, I advocate, along with the Zeitgeist movement, a switch to a resource-based economy. Please, once again refer to www.thevenusproject.com for, or, for more information on this. We don't need the middleman of money to tell us what we have. Instead, we just look at the resources themselves to see what we have. Another use of money is to measure supply and demand of goods and services. With our advanced computer and communication technology today, especially the internet, there's no reason we cannot find better ways to determine supply and demand without even using money. Besides, with the monetary system, demand and supply are often distorted and contrived. Just think about the advertising industry. Why is so much spent to tell us what we need? Shouldn't we already know that? The fact of the matter is, the money system, a technology that may have been more appropriate in the past, is no longer appropriate. How long will we keep feeding the monster until it destroys us completely? Because that is exactly what we are doing. As a result of the monetary system, even if there are unintended consequences, we are destroying our personal relationships as we are poisoning the planet. Why? Because it's profitable? Profitable for who? Who is exactly benefiting from the system? The rich? Are the wealthy really happier just by being at the top of the food chain? Perhaps happier than being at the bottom? But what happens when there's no more clean water or breathable air? What happens when we've destroyed the ecosystems at such a rate that they cannot recover? 
All the money in the world won't cure a diseased planet. Eventually, everyone will lose out. The only thing that will be left is a bruised planet. And it will take a great sigh of relief before continuing on its journey without that pesky cancer. Will it not be ashamed if we are the first species to cause its own extinction? All because collectively we are confused about what is important? That's crazy. I know that we are smarter than that. Please, we need to use our brains here. We are not on a quest to save the planet. We are trying to preserve humanity. It is imperative to understand that we are not separate from our environment. What we do to it will, inev and will inevitably affect us. Creating sustainability is the only logical conclusion. At the end of the day, we need to take responsibility for how we interact in this world. If not, we will face the consequences. If we don't strive to enlighten ourselves and others, if we don't free ourselves from the bondage of crippling paradigms in order to make positive change, who will? No savior from the outside is going to come here and save us. And the truth is, we don't need a savior. We need courage and cooperation. We need to use our brains and think critically. We need to keep asking questions. We cannot give in to the temptation to the temptation of apathy and laziness. Are you just going to throw up your hands and say, Oh well, I guess that's just the way things are, or nothing we can do about it, or my favorite expression, life isn't fair. Folks, the truth is that life is what we make of it. We need to wake up and give a damn. I give a damn about this world and all of its beauty and complexity. Do you? Thank you for listening.